passing construction barriers along Maryland Route 175. Happy Friday and welcome to Mead Week. I'm Brian Spann. The 175 construction is just one of several major projects either underway or in the planning stages. Details in a moment. Also this week, the Healing Waters Fly Fishing Chapter here at Fort Meade. February is Black History Month and news from the Civilian Personnel Office, plus a Fort Meade Reservist wins a national competition. These stories and more. But first, this from an Army press release. In light of recent reports highlighting deficient living conditions in some privatized military housing, the Army's top three senior leaders traveled to Fort Meade Thursday to speak with soldiers, their families, leaders at Fort Meade, and the private company that manages housing on the installation. Dr. Mark Esper, Secretary of the Army, General Mark Milley, Chief of Staff of the Army, and Daniel Daly, Sergeant Major of the Army, met with Lieutenant General Brad Becker, Commanding General of the Installation Management Command, Fort Meade Garrison Commander Colonel Eric Sprague, and they also met with Army families to visit single-family homes and discuss their concerns over living conditions. Secretary Esper, quote, We are deeply troubled by reports of inferior housing conditions and what we saw at Fort Meade. We want to hear firsthand from our soldiers and their families about the extent of the problem and what needs to be done to correct it. You can read the full text of the release on our Facebook page. We'll have more on this continuing story here and in our award-winning newspaper, The Sound Off. Meanwhile, on a periodic basis, we like to check on the status of major construction projects around Fort Meade. This week, it's the roads. Here's a quick look at the status of some of the biggest projects. Rockenbach Road, this $10 million project managed by Maryland State Highways is currently on hold while a new contractor is found. As such, the completion date is still to be determined. The expansion of Reese Road at Route 175 is a $19.5 million project and is scheduled to be completed by fall of 2020. Further down 175, the access control point at Mapes Road is a $35 million project started in 2016 and is slated to be finished by summer. You can read more details in last week's edition of The Sound Off. In other news, the Fort Meade Civilian Personnel Advisory Center, or CPAC, has transitioned to an appointment-only routine. They will no longer accept walk-ins with the exception of personnel clearing the installation. CPAC is open Monday through Friday from 8 to 4, except Thursdays they're open 8 to noon. For more information, call 301-677-6525. Elsewhere, Project Healy Waters Fly Fishing is a national organization dedicated to the physical and emotional rehabilitation of disabled veterans through fly fishing and fly fishing activities. Larry Vodder of the Fort Meade chapter has been like here that. since the beginning. Uh, I got involved with this about 11 years ago when I was uh, president of a Charter Unlimited group out of Silver Spring. Uh, we started a, a program over at Walt, the old Walter Reed and everyone was leaving and we would always come in the evenings and so subsequently found out that most of these guys and girls lived here at Port Mead. So we started, heck with that, let's go to Port Mead, let's go to them. So 11, uh, 10 years ago we started this here at Port Mead and been here ever since. And then when they come over here to, uh, to our sessions, it's the camaraderie and the friendship that's built here. We're a family here at Port Meade, these guys and girls. It's a uh, very tight-knit group. Um, we welcome everybody. Um, and uh, people are accepted, you know, brand new folks coming in, they're accepted, they're brought in, they come in, hey, come on in there, you can sit next to me, I'll show you what's going on. Let me tie a fly with you and show you what we're doing. In other news, February is Black History Month, and Fort Meade's observance is coming up February 28th from 11.30 to 1 at Club Meade. This year's guest speaker is the chief of Kimbrough's pharmacy department, Major Tajudeen Oten. That's February 28th at 11.30 at Club Meade. Meanwhile, here's the story of Martin Delaney, the Army's first black field officer. Martin Delaney was born in what is today Charlestown, West Virginia, to an enslaved father and a free mother. The family moved north to Pennsylvania in 1822 where he learned to read and write. In 1833, Martin began an apprenticeship with a Pittsburgh physician and opened up a successful medical practice. In 1843, Delaney began publishing a newspaper and later joined abolitionist Frederick Douglass to aid publications in Rochester, New York. With the outbreak of the Civil War, Delaney recruited thousands of men to the Union Army. In 1865, Martin persuaded President Lincoln to create an all-black corps led by African-American officers. Delaney was commissioned a major in the 52nd Colored Troop Regiment, making him the first black line officer in U.S. Army history. In the post-war years, Delaney devoted his life to black pride, politics, and enforcing civil rights for African-Americans. Today, he is considered by many to be the father of black nationalism. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Mead Week.